you've been wondering what skills you need to enter into cybersecurity, we know the talk around town is you need to get all these certs and all these other different things and you can make six figures, but what skills do you think you need? Well, today I'll be reacting to a video done by Cyberspatial detailing what are the five skills you need to break into cybersecurity. And I'll be reacting to what he says. So without further ado, let's get to the video. Transition. There's just so much info out there that it's hard to even get started. You might hear people talk about an alphabet soup of certifications to take, but I'm here to tell you they're not that important. While there's some value going through the process of studying for certs, what is important are your skills and experience. Because I like to agree with that. Right off the bat, skills and experience are very important. Now we know a lot of people do not have those skills or experience in the beginning when they are starting out, but so far, so good. In this field, what you can do will make you so much more successful than what you know. Solving technical problems is the way to earning the trust and confidence from people you work with. Buckle up and let's dive right in. Number one, building and using virtual machines. Virtual machines, also called VMs, are operating systems that run on top of your existing or host OS. The virtualized OS is commonly referred to as a guest and is managed by software called a hypervisor. The hypervisor lets you manage and allocate resources like CPU, memory, and disk space on your guest. Popular hypervisors you may have heard of include Hyper-V by Microsoft, VirtualBox by Oracle, VM. I'm gonna stop it right here. Uh, I don't disagree, but I don't know what's the point of starting off with virtual machines. Maybe he's gonna get into it in a second, but I still would agree that you would need to learn how to use virtual machines if you want to practice uh, for most facets of cybersecurity. And then they have some non-technical parts that don't really require lab work. There's more documentation and understanding different frameworks and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So let's get back into it. I want to see why the reason he brought up virtual machines. VMware and KVM. Oftentimes when you hear the term cloud, it usually just means thousands of VMs running on specialized hypervisors on someone else's server farm in a data center somewhere. Virtual machines let you become platform agnostic, meaning you're no longer limited to any particular operating system and tools available for it. Many people spend all their time just on one OS and debate which ones are better. Let me tell you, it doesn't matter. As a pro, you should be versed in all of them and be comfortable working with any platform. This maximizes- That I definitely agree with. You should be familiar with most uh, platforms. So most of the time you're gonna have Windows, Mac OS, Linux, uh, there might be a couple of other with different ones. And then if you want to get into some more nuanced stuff, when it gets into actual different cloud things, we got Azure, you have AWS, GCP, most of those uh, things. Mostly, if you know more about Linux, you'll probably fare better. Uh, doing pretty much a lot of stuff in terminal command line uh, is the best way to go when you're trying to do things with the cloud and really be familiar with different multiple OS and stuff. GUIs are cool to know, but terminal is kind of where it's at when you're trying to do stuff. If he's probably talking about like maybe engineering route or something like that, but you know, let's get back into it. Maximizes the scope of your skills and makes you effective in any situation. Virtual machines also give you the flexibility to train and research in an isolated environment without affecting your main driver. You can quickly take snapshots of a guest OS and restore it to an earlier state. Opening a suspect file you received, use a VM. Want to practice configuring a server? Use a VM. Slinging exploits at a target? Use a VM. Moving on to number two, learn the command line. Hey, so I get what he's saying now. He's pretty much trying to say like, if you want to lab and test stuff out, you want to use a virtual machine. And I totally agree. It's one of the things one of the first things I do at most companies, if it's not locked down, is I set me up a virtual machine. That way, if I'm going to work on certain alerts, you know, malicious files, something like that, I can work on it in a VM and not expose my actual company's organization to actual threats. And as we're on number two, he's talking about command line. You heard me earlier just speak about command line, terminal, or whatever. So you, he's on it. I've never watched this video before. So. Shout out to this guy. Let's get back into it. Don't run away, but embrace it. The command line interface, commonly referred to as a shell, is the simplest and arguably the most efficient way to interact with an operating system. For example, if I'm looking for an entry in this CSV file, Excel might freeze or crash. Running a lightweight shell command gets me what I need in no time. 
Why is it called a shell? The important parts of an OS that actually make it run is called the kernel because it functions at the center of the system. The part that's exposed to a user is called the shell since it wraps around the kernel. And I really have to shout this out, man. This is informational. So people, I see why this video has done the numbers is done. Very informational. And like he said, it is one of the easiest ways to interact with the OS, which is why I'm practicing, you know, my scripting skills because they're essential, especially in incident response. You don't have a lot of time to always go into a computer. Like, for example, at my last position, we had different EDR tools and you could remote into the host, but you could SSH into the host and then you could look for files and clean up the host with command line different PowerShell uh, commands. So that's why it, it's super essential uh, to understanding how to use uh, terminal. So he's definitely right. Let's keep going. It's just like a car where the steering wheels, pedals, and dashboards giving you control over the engine or transmission all exist in the shell of the car. The command line gives you the lowest level access to software functionality that comes with an operating system. Many of the most useful tools don't have a graphical interface to point and click. Mastering the command line expands your arsenal and lets you get more done with less. It lets you be able to use scripting and automation to tackle repetitive tasks that would otherwise waste lots of time. Automating your workflow by learning the command line makes you a tremendously valuable asset to the team. I recommend starting out with Bash or Born Again Shell since it comes default with almost every Linux distribution. Mac OS used it in its terminal app but has since changed to Zsh or Z Shell and has some nicer features. If Bash is like a Toyota, then Zsh is more like a Lexus. Bash is so popular and effective that Microsoft actually released the Windows subsystem for Linux, or WSL, and lets you install several different Linux flavors to use Bash as a native app. This is super convenient since I can access all of my Linux tools without having to switch to a virtual machine. Now, understand that PowerShell is actually the go-to native shell for Windows. It's very different from how you would use the Linux command line, but gives you a ton of powerful Windows administration abilities. If you work in an environment where Windows is the primary OS, definitely learn PowerShell as well. I'm going to start a series on the Linux command line very soon. Comment below to let me know what tools and content. Hey, he's on it. I really had done the ad, man. I mean, this is a, a good video, straightforward, educational, let you know why you need to learn these things. Let's keep going concepts you like to learn. Number three, system administration. All of us with a computer or smartphone from your grandma. To I'm going to stop it right here again. Sys admin. I always talk about these people on Twitter. System administrators do a lot of security work and they don't even know it. So system administration is huge. I don't know exactly what he's going to cover, but system administration covers a lot of things. Like you use all the stuff he's already talked about, virtual machines, PowerShell, Bash, uh, like you said, Z Shell. You're using multiple OSs. You're doing vulnerability management, patch management. Um, you know, also what the software that's on your yeah, endpoints, endpoint detection, all that type of stuff. Like you're updating all that stuff. It's very essential to any organization. And it's really really part of the security uh like they should call them security system admin instead of just system administrators that's just me personally but let's see what he got to say uh, to it wizard is really a sysadmin at some level it all depends on what level you're at system administration involves the configuring and maintaining of computers whether a personal device or a high-powered server when i was first using computers as a kid i loved to dive down into every single setting available on the computer just to see what it did reading manuals online guides and playing around just drove this curiosity further by doing that i became the family it help desk system administration is about knowing your platform and various tools inside and out to be able to help others who don't whatever your skill i challenge you to fiddle around and learn by doing delete some files and try to recover them download open and monitor old viruses in a virtual machine with tools like windows sys internals to see what they do try to extract files and passwords off a computer without knowing the login info whatever it is Push to the limits of what you already know by reading guides out there and following along. So to this point in the video, I don't necessarily know if he's trying to tell you what actual route to go in cybersecurity. It's more like just a high level overview of what he would recommend that you know on a uh, fundamental level about cybersecurity. Because, you know, this thing's right here more so sounds like a little bit more red teamish. 
could everybody is in love with red teamers but i would say it's also important to understand these things on a blue team side because if you understand how offense is attacking you you can defend against it I, I, like i say i always make these comparisons when it comes to sports you know when you come to uh football when you want to try to protect the deep pass most of the time you want to probably go to uh two safety so cover two to kind of get those deep passes to the outside defend against that you know that nine route but also know it's, it is susceptible you know to a post if you can get the safety to bite on that but this isn't about football this is about security <laughs> let's get back into it and let's see what he's talking about practice a little more each day and you'll level up in no time number four computer networking this is the heart and soul of it all what I like to call the cyberspatial laws of physics. It's understanding how devices interact with each other and how data gets from point A to point B. And I would like to say, I would probably look at networking similar to like the, and I could be wrong, but I think I'm right on this, like the nervous system. Like you just said, everything interacts. The nervous system co uh, connects all, everything in our body. So again, we don't even have to think about moving our fingers, our feet, our mouth, you know, anything on our body. It just does it appear fast, like, that's networking like we're not thinking about uh when we're searching something on the internet we're just typing it in and network already knows how to go reach out to that uh site and get it for us that's what i'm thinking about when it comes to networking but networking is much much more than just simply browsing on the internet and it's a lot of different things that it could do with networking so networking is definitely a fundamental fundamental part of being in cybersecurity because if you don't know a little bit about networking it's hard to secure it so Let's see. A strong foundation in networking will make you a rock star troubleshooter, whether you're red teaming, defending, or running day-to-day -day IT ops. There's two conceptual models that govern computer networking, TCP IP and OSI. They group all your different networking and telecommunication protocols into layers. TCP IP is older and uses four layers, network access, internet, transport, and application layers. OSI stands for the Open System Interconnection, which is developed by the International Organization for Standardization, or ISO. These guys define everything from country codes to time and date formats. OSI is newer and uses seven layers, physical, data link, network, transport, session, presentation, and application layers. All these layers are just a way to describe what's happening where. So if you're receiving a package from someone in a different country, it's going to get passed between the matrix and be much more skilled at your craft. Number five, personal digital security. This is an area I've been particularly passionate about because it affects our families, friends, and organizations. The cybercrime industry is booming. You don't have to scroll far to see what the online black marketplace looks like. As technology becomes more intertwined with our lives, from internet connected cars to refrigerators, the vulnerabilities and attack vectors are gonna increase more and more. If you wanna go deep into cybersecurity, there's no better place to start with than yourself. From passwords, encryption to secure comms, stay up to date with the latest security news and best practices. You might just be the subject matter expert in your office that- And I'm cutting them off right that, and uh, I totally agree with him with all that. Um, understanding pretty much the threat landscape now for your own self, for your family, and everything really helps out like some simple as changing the admin password on your home router is big <laughs> those people run into the same uh situations when it comes to a company you'd be surprised understanding hey how to make a strong password uh password uh managers make sure you're not using the same passwords on too many sites you know going to you know like he showed in the thing have i been pwned uh, pretty much different things. And like, uh, this is a story actually from one of my clients at one point in time, I always talk about, um, uh, I have a Slack space and I have like bleeping computer, NIST, cribs on security, all these different RSS feeds into a channel. It's called security news. So they implemented that at work and he was able to pretty much get ahead of law for J because they, you know, and he's not even a security role at the time. And he really helped his company out a lot, which led to him actually getting a promotion. And that's because from due diligence from just, want to stay updated on all the latest security news and everything but that's the end of the video i will link it in the description so you can follow him i believe that was a, a great video i really believe those five skills are pretty good i think those are foundational skills uh if you notice he didn't really mention programming languages because truth be told every every position in cybersecurity doesn't require programming but most of the technical roles will let's recap what he said he started with virtual machines then he went to command line 
Then he went to sysadmin, networking, and the last one was personal security. I believe that those five general five skills can help you be successful in cybersecurity. Um, now it can get a little nuance, like, because once you go from there, then you say, okay, now I need to know other things to go with the type of roles I want to get. And I'm going to be doing a video on that pretty soon. Uh, it's going to probably be one of my uh, harder videos to do because I really want to be informational like this one. Uh, and it's going to be about like, you know, skills you need to get into a sock. So thank you guys for tuning in. If you like this reaction, please subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, hit the bell notification, share it on your social media for me. And also, you know, check out the Patreon. I'm dropping exclusive content there first, but hey, let's get textual. And I'm